Okay, here is a last um, short lesson on actual self-driving. Uh, the last part of this overall section is on um, electrical power. This is on self-driving. It's just a set of small remarks which I gathered together uh, to finish this uh, overall section on autonomous vehicle technology. So here is a description of LiDAR. Here is even a, um, um, hopefully it shows up on the video, a, a picture of a LiDAR sensor. And um, this is the typical type of result of LiDAR. And um, here up here is actually technically what it does. It, it's a, unlike, say, um, cameras which are passive, they receive light. LiDARs generate um, uh, lasers and then they receive the laser back. So this laser comes along here, back, goes here and then bounces back. A uh, key feature of LiDAR is that you um, can actually detect distance. And <coughs> so that's depth projection. And it also can be, as you can project them in multiple different directions, you can get a complete horizontal view, because uh, you can choose which direction you send out that, uh, that laser. And uh, you have to, of course, have some non-trivial technology to be able to rotate and preserve accuracy and know exactly where you are. And um, Elon Musk, who was such a wonderful, the successful person, you have to pay attention to him. He says you should use passive optical devices, standard cameras. One reason it just cost. Here is this fancy LiDAR system, 75,000, and budget LiDAR, 8,000. Well, 8,000 wouldn't be so bad on a, at least a Tesla, which costs quite a lot of money. But 75,000, I would have to buy a Ferrari or something to be able to justify that. Um, and because you know when you transmitted the pulse, uh, you know, and you know when you receive it, they get a time. And then using the speed of the pulse, you can actually calculate the distance. That's why you can, um, that's why you have both the um, structure of the object and its distance. Okay, LiDAR, interesting technology. Um, here we have some comments on um, self-driving and its uh, success or otherwise. And it points out that um, we, the various announcements, such as Cruz's announcement and Uber's investment got uh, cut back because of worries about safety and things like that. Uber had a fatal crash in 2018, and it just was probably their software was not mature because it was should have been detected. The pedestrian was non-trivial, but it should is one that they certainly should have found out. And <coughs> uh, Morgan Stanley cut Waymo's um, valuation in just a few months ago, September 2019, by 40% because the AV tech, technology was taking longer than expected. Um, here are some um, Passengers carried into California, you can see Waymo is way above everybody else. And the public are sort of pretty worried about um, uh, safety, which they ought to be. And in fact, I think it's safety is the main thing which is stopping the deployment. And it's the main reason why I say Gartner doesn't think it will work at all. Here is um, uh, some comments on the so-called autonomous vehicle bubble. But there's the things which are worrisome, which suggest it may be delayed, but other things which are the opposite. They suggest it's going to be more aggressive. The huge number of people doing it suggests it will happen earlier, because those people wouldn't do it if it was only going to be here 10 years from now. Um, here is this uh, plot we've um, uh, this is actually, we've seen this in a different fashion before. I told you that Waymo drove 11,000 miles between disengagement in uh, 2018, 6,000 in 2017, so it's getting better. Uh, we want this number to be as large as possible. GM, of course, is Cruise, 
And it, Cruz and Waymo just dominate. Nobody else is even a serious player. Um, this is only in California, but California being as relatively a forward looking, I mean, sort of tends to support such innovative things. Um, okay, here's an interesting comment that um, local government ought to worry about self driving. I mean, Bloomington ought to be worrying about self driving and get saying up to, um, uh, to cope with self driving. And implicitly, the article here, which is another medium.com article, just I say, really, you're seeing self driving being addressed from so many different points of view. The, uh, the Tesla versus GM point of view, the local government needs to worry about it, um, etc. And uh, here is um, Tesla's level five uh, goals discussed here. And um, here's Elon Musk pointing out that when you're you drive your Tesla to work, you can just automatically, automatically allow it to be a robo taxi while you're working in your office and then just collect it at the end of the day and you just earn money while you're working. And he claims that um, that will happen sort of now. And he's doing it without LIDAR as we say here. And he's doing it with an array of sensors and, uh, and cameras which is together cover everything. Uh, it has a self-driving chip, which we'll show on a later slide, which is six billion transistors. And by optimizing the way the chips are arranged, you can make it to be more efficient on self-driving than say the NVIDIA GPU, which is a general, basically a general purpose device. Uh, it's a Samsung chip and um, it's a full self-driving chip, and it um, costs uh, Tesla less than the original NVIDIA. And it actually has a power increase. You would hope it would say power decrease. Uh, and it has lots of redundancy. You can't afford to have your computer break down when you're about to try to avoid a crash. That would not be good. So everything has to be highly redundant. Here is this chip. Shown as an overlay, uh, those red marks are from the previous uh, marks on the previous text, and we have a giant chip here, and um, it's uh, it's uh, there are you know there's probably about a hundred companies developing AI chips, and Tesla is just one of them. But of course, most companies developing general purpose AI chips; they're not generating chips for automobiles. Um, here is an article by, which doesn't, is not quite so impressed by Elon Musk, and um, points out that if you have a car driving along and you take at least some algorithms and you just put some dots here, those dots will, will mislead the car as to what to do and cause it to swerve into the uh, opposing lane, and causing giant crashes and disasters. Um, so that's the that was with Tesla autopilot being fooled. I assume just as people try to get security breakthroughs, they also try to break the autopilot. Uh, here we have some uh, another remark re relevant for not for electrical cars but for um, mobility. That these mobility companies like Lyft and Uber also do scooters and bikes. Which are called micro mobility for obvious reasons. And it's extremely popular. Here we have the increase in micro mobility, which in 2018 more than doubled from 2017. And if you look at how it's divided, the scooter is, this one is here, scooter is 38.5, bike share 36.5. And some sort of well, plus nine, which is so-called station-based bike share, whatever that is. <coughs> of course, there are quite a few accidents. It's a pretty dangerous thing driving a scooter around, so that has to be understood. And the consequences. Notice that scooters actually have accidents, but we were panicked when a self-driving car had one accident. So we have to remember, have a sense of perspective. And. Um, 
these scooter accidents, and people don't wear helmets, which they probably don't, uh, tend to be quite serious with a substantial number of head injuries.